What's good, Knicks Nation? Salute. Tonight, the New York Knicks went down to the Big Easy to face the New Orleans Pelicans. After defeating the Atlanta Hawks last night, they were looking to extend their winning streak to two. Unfortunately, they weren't able to do so. Why? Because the Knicks looked like a team that was playing the second game of a back-to-back. -back. New York would dig themselves a hole as they would miss their shots and commit too many turnovers. But that doesn't mean there wasn't a bright spot. We got another solid RJ performance as he continues to start hit the str a strong start to the season. But we got to give credit where credit is due. Because the Pelicans were ready to ball tonight. Specifically, Zion Williamson and Brandon Ingram, who both scored 24 and 26 points respectively. In the end, the Knicks fall to 1-2 and two to start the season as they lose to the Pelicans 96-87. to 87. Oh, it's tough night, tough night. Second of a back-to-back. -back. Um, some concerning uh, things that I saw tonight. Mm. You know, uh, second game on the road on a back-to-back. -back, they're always tough. But, you know, this early in the season, I'm not sure that the whole back-to-back -back thing is as big of an excuse for me as it could be for many. But I understand it. Um, I understand the, the thinking of them potentially, you know, they only score 87 points. So it's one of those things of what is the excuse of the second of a back-to-back? -back? Like, how much is that true to the combination of things that you still think they need to work on and some, some concerning signs you see out there? It's very uncharacteristic, as you said, for we're only three games into the season. It's not like they played... You know, we're not talking about game 52 and these guys are exhausted. And, you know, you talked about them facing Cleveland. Well, for Brunson and Randall, they, they got to figure this out because playing the Cavs, it's a back to back, my man. They're, they're in Cleveland. And then they go home to New York to go face them October 31st on Halloween and then November 1st. So we can't have it's like even though it was a back to back, they're going to be doing it right there again. So it's. They got to figure out what's what's wrong, man, and really get into that groove because I know this is a difficult part of the season for them with the opponents that they have, right? But you gotta you gotta start off on a strong foot. Like you at least gotta go four and six to start the season, so that way you're still like in this like in this mode where there's not too much chaos. Because if it draw if it falls to like you know three and seven, two and eight, God forbid one nine, then then there's going to be, you know what the tabloids are going to say. Heads are going to be spinning. And we don't need none of that. Yeah. And, you know, when you talk about, uh, you know, because let's get to it with Julius Randle. Um, this, uh, <laughs> it, it, it's it's strange because, you know, he, got, he has 12 rebounds tonight, four assists, but eight turnovers, bro. Eight, eight turnovers. Nasty. Oh. Oh, goodness gracious. And the thing about the eight turnovers is, you know, it's not a, like a Luka Doncic eight turnovers. It's not like a LeBron James eight turnovers where players are still impacting the game or they're turnovers because they're trying to create plays and maybe the defense is playing good defense. But the, it's, it's, it's the thing with Randall is those unforced turnovers is, you know, just trying – not having the, the awareness – of how many seconds are left in the shot clock, where you are on the floor, and how the floor is around you. You know, I I, I kind of like two of those turnovers. You know, there's like two or one second. Like, there was one turnover. He goes to the basket. The shot clock has one second left, and he still has the ball while it's, it says one. And you're under the basket. You're going towards the basket. I would think the high IQ play there is you have no choice but to put up the shot. But he tries to go underneath the, the, the defender, and he tries to give a pass to Mitch. I mean, Mitch doesn't even ca uh, catch the pass because it was deflected, and then shot clock violation turnover. But even if Mitch catches that ball, even cleanly, it's still going to be a turnover because by the time Mitch goes up to dunk, shot clock expires. It's those little details that concern me in the big spot because I'm not going to... I mean, let's see, but I've always said I'm not too concerned about Randall in the regular season. I think with him, we've gotten to a point where we're going to evaluate him on the playoffs, right? Because oh, at, sure. in the end, that's all that matters. However, 
that doesn't mean that we don't see the red flags now and early of, uh uh-oh, these are some of the same type of plays. These are some of the same type of habits. These are some of the same type of situations. Whether you want to say that it's going to take them some time because of the ankle surgery, whether you want to say that it's a second of a back-to-back, whatever the case is, you know, it's some of the same mistakes that terrify, you know, us about how can this translate to the playoffs if that's going to be eliminated by the time we get to the playoffs. Another guy who we got to discuss, man. We got to talk about the bright spot, man, because I don't want to make this show all negative. We got to talk about RJ Barrett because RJ, your guy, your guy, JD, 18 points tonight, three rebounds, two assists, four for eight from the field, one for six from downtown, three for four from the free throw line, one steal. He is having a solid start to begin this season, man. I, I really like the way RJ's been playing. I think when you look the way, when you're watching him, it's, his decision making is better. He is reading the court much better than we've seen in the past. It's not him bulldozing down the lane trying to uh, finish amongst like three defenders. It's him now recognizing what the defense is trying to do and kick it out to the perimeter to find a good shot. I'm really liking what RJ's doing. And then when he does attack, it's like he sees the mismatch that he wants. If not, there's like a slight bit of wiggle now, a slight bit. I'm not saying a lot, a slight now with like when he attempts uh, mid-range jumpers and so forth. I'm really liking that he's adding that to his game. That just takes repetition for him to get better at. But I'm liking what RJ has shown through the course of these first three games because it's not a slow start, man. We talked about it uh, for the preview before uh, the Knicks tipped off against the Celtics for the home opener. And I said, I just can't see a, I can't see a slow start. Cannot see a slow start from this guy because we've had that every single year. And the fact that he's coming out the gate with strong performances in these in these three games. And not against easy opponents, by the way. These are the good the things that you want to see. Sometimes it's 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 the same thing. It correlates with Randall, right? Where Randall didn't have such a great game one against the Celtics. He didn't have such a great game two against the Hawks, but the mindset and the plan was there. You saw what the intentions were. So therefore he kept the low uh, the turnovers low. And you could see where Randall was heading in terms of what type of game he was having on the floor and the impact that it had. Same thing tonight with with RJ. You know, he had better nights. His first two games statistically were better than tonight. Um, Nobody really pretty much had a great game tonight. Mitchell Robinson, a few other players had decent nights. But with RJ, the mindset, the attitude, the game plan is has been consistent through the first three games. So you're going to have a little bit setback nights like tonight, but everything else is Riders. there. All right, guys. Thank you all for tuning in. Salute to the chat. Salute to the chat. Salute to the mods. Salute to the franchise channel members. Salute to everybody. We'll catch you later next time. This is Alex and JD. We out.